There are 40 startup incubators and over 1,800 DPIT registered startups in Andhra Pradesh. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at 10 of those companies, starting with one from Vishakapatnam called Saif Automation. Founded by Ali Askar Kalkarawala along with his brother Tahir Kalkarawala and their father Ahmed Sheikh Abdulli in 2017, Saif Automation builds remotely controlled water drones that are used to perform rescue operations. And it took them almost a year, 300 hours of testing, and 21 attempts to build the first model of their water drone but the results were well worth it. Their flagship drone Safe Seas weighs only 12 kilos, but it can pull a person weighing up to 100 kilos and reach a speed of seven knots, which is almost 13 kilometers per hour. And one really awesome thing about these drones is that they operate on free radio frequency. That's how they're controlled, which means that Safe Automation's drones will work perfectly fine even during a crisis like an earthquake or a cyclone when the internet is down and mobile towers are broken. And these guys even won the IDEX challenge in 2019 under the category of unmanned surface vehicle for their water drone, which helped them to secure an order from the Indian Navy worth 13 crore rupees in 2021 for their water drone. With India's vast coastline of 7,500 kilometers, Safe Automation's water drones have huge potential to be used by defense and civilian industries as they could be equipped with surveillance cameras, probes, and even weaponry. All right, next up on this list, we have a startup called Green Jams, which is trying to reduce global carbon emissions by making carbon negative bricks. Founded by Tarun Jami and Varun Jami in 2017, Green Jams specializes in making bricks called agrocrete out of agricultural residue and industrial waste. But why is a startup making bricks? Well, right now the construction industry globally is responsible for about 40% of carbon emissions and India is one of the biggest contributors to this because India is estimated to have 100,000 brick kilns which are making about 150 to 200 billion bricks every single year using 25 million tons of coal to do it. And that's where Green Jams comes into the picture because their bricks are using agricultural waste, stuff like for example crop stubble which would otherwise be burned and converted into toxic air, and they're using it to make bricks and also in the process preventing carbon dioxide from being released into the air. But that's not the only reason why people are buying their bricks. In fact, agrocrete can also reduce construction costs by as much as 50% as it uses 60% less mortar material, and also they're much lighter compared to conventional bricks while offering the same strength. Green Jam's bricks have already helped to capture a thousand tons of carbon dioxide, and they have huge names like ITC as their clients. All right, moving on to the next company in this list, we have Yes Poho, which was founded by Rakuram Kujibatla and Minakshi Dube in 2017. Yes Poho is a simple e-commerce platform where you can buy saris directly from the handloom weavers that are making them. But the way that this startup operates is pretty interesting, so I want to take a look at it. Firstly, they work on an inventory-free model, which means that they don't keep any inventory like most e-commerce platforms, and instead, they deliver products on demand. In fact, the way that it works is that once Yes Poho receives an order, they pass it on directly to the weaver, and the weaver gets to work, and then once the piece is finished, Yes Poho team inspects this sari and sends it to the customer. But why keep such a long and complicated process for buying a sari? Well, actually, this is their USP. In fact, the very reason that Yes Poho was born was because one of the co-founders, Minakshi, couldn't find the right sari for her brother's wedding, even after a long search. And one of the other benefits of on-demand saris is that Yes Poho lets you customize and design your own sari through their Create My Design feature. And then once that's done, you can also try on the sari virtually using their AR VR feature called Try Me and share it with your friends and family to get their opinions before purchasing. This gives you the freedom of changing designs until you find the exact sari that you're looking for, which is as close to the offline experience as possible. And this is what sets Yes Boho apart from its competitors, and it's the reason why Yes Boho's platform is used by more than 1 million women. So this next startup is in the EV category. The company is called Astra Motors. It sells made in India premium electric cycles, and the company was incubated at Andhra University's A-Hub. The startup has set up their manufacturing facilities in Visakhapatnam and Vizianagram, where they design and manufacture 300 to 500 electric cycles every month. And they've already launched two smart electric cycle models, the Rifle T9 and Carry. The Rifle T9 offers a range of 70 kilometers with a top speed of 25 kilometers per hour, while the Carry is a cargo-focused electric cycle with a higher range of 120 kilometers per charge with a top speed of 25 kilometers per hour. The company is now planning on scaling up their production facility to manage manufacture 1,500 bikes per month, and they've already started discussions with distributors to bring their electric cycles to the United States, the UK, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. All right, the next company in this list is called Robocoupler, and it was founded by Praveen Mala in 2009. So as you can probably guess, Robocoupler is a robotics company that made headlines with their flagship humanoid cop called Sibira. So Robocoupler has been making robots for their clients and training people to build their own robots for over a decade. But back in 2019, they launched Miss Sibira, which stands for Cybersecurity Interactive Robotic Agent. 
And the interesting thing about Siberia is that she was actually inducted into the Andhra Pradesh police as a cop. This makes Andhra Pradesh the third state in India to induct a humanoid as a cop after Kerala and Telangana. Siberia was developed for 8.7 lakh rupees and is used to receive complaints in both oral and text format which are then transferred to the concerned investigation officer. Since then though, robocouplers developed multiple robots including Sita, a robot working in the Araku Coffee Museum to explain coffee manufacturing to visitors in multiple Indian languages including English, Telugu and Tamil. And then there's also Ayutha which is designed to serve food and medicine respectively at hotels and hospitals. Alright, moving on now, we have the last startup in this list from Visakhapatnam, and it's a space tech startup called Daramanda. This company was founded by Vinil Judson along with his fellow Andhra University alumni in 2022, and Daramanda claims to be the state's first space tech startup. But that's not the only reason to celebrate this company, because there are more than 25,000 pieces of space debris sized more than 10 centimeters still orbiting the Earth, which includes parts of dead satellites and spacecraft that have been there pretty much since we started launching stuff into space more than 50 years ago. And the reason why that stuff is still up there is because at the moment humanity just doesn't have any great way of bringing it back down to earth but Daramandal is working on sustainable satellite technology which would be capable of deorbiting these satellites and pieces of debris and bringing them back down to earth at the end of their life cycle they've already completed the simulation phase for the development of this technology and now they're looking for investors to build the entire subsystem that could be used in these satellites and if they're successful in developing this technology and of course raising venture capital so that they can beat other to the punch, then Tharamandal could actually be one of the most successful space tech startups from India as every space agency and space tech company building satellites would want to use their technology. Up next, we have a company called Erovaka Technologies, which is based in the city of Vijaywada. So back in 2011, there was a sudden change in the water quality of a pond in Andhra Pradesh that killed all of its fish. And there was one man in particular who wanted to find a solution to this problem and was frustrated that he couldn't. And this man was the uncle of Sriram Ravi, the founder of Erovaka Technologies. See, one of the biggest reasons for the death of fish in ponds is low amounts of dissolved oxygen. And most fish farmers really have no way of monitoring this. And so this is the problem that Erovaka Technologies set out to solve when the company got started in 2012. And they launched their first product, PondGuard, in 2013. So in a nutshell, PondGuard monitors oxygen levels in ponds and gives real-time updates to farmers directly on their phones so that they can take measures to increase oxygen levels whenever they start to drop. And since 2013, Aerovac has developed multiple IoT-enabled solutions for fish farmers and more specifically shrimp farmers, including Pond Mother, an automated shrimp feeder, and Shrimp Talk, a device that tells farmers if shrimps have consumed all of their feed or not. All of these solutions have been built to help aquaculture farmers to increase and protect their yield, and the company has actually been a huge hit in that customer segment. In fact, even though the company makes their products in Andhra Pradesh, more than 90% of their revenue actually comes from exports outside of India, especially Latin America and Southeast Asia. They ended up being so successful that a Dutch fish feed producer called Nutrico acquired Erovaca Technologies in 2022. All right, coming up next, we have another Vijaywada startup, this time in the EV category called Avira. Founded by Dr. Venkata Ramana and Chandini Chandana in 2017, Avira manufactures electric two-wheelers. The company started commercial operations with the launch of their first electric scooter called Retrosaw in 2019, and this scooter has a top speed of 92 kilometers per hour, a range of 140 kilometers on a single charge, and these scooters are manufactured at their facility in Vijaywada. So far, the company has sold more than 12,000 scooters, and now they're planning on expanding their presence outside of India to countries like Australia, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka. In order to cater to increasing demand, Avira is also planning on investing 100 crore rupees to increase their production capacity from 25,000 to 1 lakh units every year. And this is a huge accomplishment for a tiny startup based out of a small city like Vijaywada. Alright, now we're going to move over to another city, Tirupati, where we have a waste management startup called Ecofinex. Growing up in Tirupati, Chandan Kakarapalli was well aware of the fact that Tirupati Venkateshwara Temple, which is one of India's most visited temples with over 4 crore pilgrims every single year, generates about 4 40 tons of waste every single day. After meeting his co-founder Darshan Jaluru at a startup community meetup, the duo bonded over their common passion for wanting to save the environment and so in 2020 they started Ecofinix with the goal of cleaning up their own city of Tirupati while also creating a business around it. They started by collecting waste and then segregating it into organic and inorganic waste and then using vermicomposting to convert this organic waste into organic fertilizers. But then they ran into a problem because farmers in the region weren't aware of vermicomposting and didn't 
didn't trust their product, and so they decided to distribute 2,000 kilos of their organic fertilizer for free. This gave farmers the opportunity to test the product before actually purchasing it, and many of them were convinced that it was actually effective. And so at that point, EcoPhoenix started selling their organic fertilizer priced at four rupees per kilo. By 2022, they had 1,000 farmers using their products, and the company claimed to generate 10 lakh rupees in revenue every single month. And now we're going to move over to yet another city in Andhra Pradesh, this one called Bhimavaram, where we have a company called Aqua Exchange. So earlier you might have noticed me talking about the shrimp industry, and you probably wondered how big of an industry actually is that. Well, not a lot of people know this, but India is actually the world's second largest shrimp exporter, and almost 30% of the country's shrimp come from Andhra Pradesh. And so when Pawan Kosaraju returned to his hometown of Visakhapatnam after studying in Germany, he noticed that shrimp farmers were actually finding it very hard to access financial support from banks. After doing some digging, he found out that shrimp farming is actually kind of unpredictable as a business, and so banks are often hesitant to give out loans to shrimp farmers. And so in 2020, Pawan partnered with Kiran Kumar and Himasundar Davili to start Aqua Exchange to help shrimp farmers increase their production and profits. Their first product, and this is going to sound a little bit familiar, is PowerMon, a tool that helps farmers to monitor the power consumption and oxygen levels of their shrimp farms in real time. But then later on, they launched AquaBot, a solar-powered automatic shrimp feeder, to make their shrimp farming operations even more efficient. So far, they've helped automate close to 40,000 acres of shrimp farms, and last year, Aqua Exchange merged with another IoT-based hardware manufacturer, Next Aqua, to strengthen their product portfolio for shrimp farmers. And thanks to their efforts, shrimp farming in the state is becoming a much more predictable business, which means that banks are likely going to be less hesitant to give out loans to shrimp farmers, which of course will grow the overall industry. All right, those were our picks for the top 10 Andhra Pradesh startups. And do check out our video on the top 10 Odisha startups next. It's in the top right corner of your screen, and I will catch you in the next one.